On a restricted site, EOD specialists are working on an unexploded ANM-644 explosive discovered at the location. While his co-worker was disabling the discovered unexploded bomb, Zhou Inchang was just blabbering and scribbling on the sandy ground. Zhou Inchang wondered out loud what the thing was that he was forgetting. In a hospital in Seoul, Inchang's pregnant wife, Ji Young, was having a checkup, and she asked the doctor what the gender of her baby was. After her checkup, Ji Young received a call from In Chang, who was stuck in traffic on his way to the hospital where Ji Young was. He tried to persuade Ji Young to tell him the gender of the baby, but to no avail, as Ji Young just kept on teasing him. News of a complete denuclearization in Pyongyang was playing on the Jumbotron, or the large screen television you can see on building walls, and everyone who was watching the news, including In Chang, was shocked as an earthquake destroying the cultural center in North Korea was filmed live in the news. Right after the live news of the earthquake in Pyongyang, everyone received an emergency alert warning them to beware of aftershocks after the 7.8 earthquake that occurred. In Chang noticed his water bottle shaking, and suddenly, a severe earthquake ensued. In Chang remembered Ji Young and immediately drove away as everything around him began collapsing. In Chang's car crashed into another car, and he stepped out of it to see buildings collapsing on top of him. In Chang ran away as buildings began collapsing like dominoes. News reported that Baekdu Mountain, located at the Chinese-North Korean border, erupted with a magnitude of 8, which is the highest so far. Alongside the news of the disaster, it was also reported that the Chinese government was mobilizing military forces around the China-North Korea border under the tag of risk management while the U.S. government was evacuating all U.S. citizens in Korea. A professor named Jang Bongrei, who goes by the name Robert, was preparing to leave for the U.S. as he had U.S. citizenship when John Yu Kyung, the senior secretary of the president, came to ask for his advice regarding the eruption. John Yu Kyung read the thesis Robert published three years ago and planned to seek Robert's help as he has studied Mount Baekdu and its possible future eruptions. Robert refused to go with her but had no choice when John Yu Kyung threatened him. In a meeting with the officials, they discussed the four magma chambers under Baekdu, one of which has already exploded, and the other three are threatening to explode consecutively. While the first two of the three eruptions were predicted to be relatively weak, the last eruption was predicted to be a very strong one that would damage 48% of the Korean peninsula. Robert was called in front and he advised that they induce an explosion of 600 kilotons to make the ground around the chamber collapse and make a passage for the pressure to decompress. When Robert said that they needed to use nuclear fission, the officials had a negative reaction. In the president's office, a nervous Robert advised the president to just wait until the disaster ends instead of doing what he originally advised at the meeting, as it could result in missing the target point and ending up destroying the Korean peninsula even more. The president didn't listen to him and ordered John Yu Kyung to get a nuclear weapon or steal it if necessary. Zhou Inchang was seated inside a car with the colonel, who gave him a mission and told him to report to base immediately. Inchang tried to decline as he was already getting discharged. But when the colonel offered to put him and Ji Young on the U.S. citizen evacuation list, In Chang agreed for the safety of his family. Later that night, he told Ji Young about the mission, not saying the whole thing to avoid making Ji Young worry. He told Ji Young to go to the meeting point, and after his mission, they would go to In Chang port together so they could leave Korea. He promised that he would finish his mission quickly and that he would be there on time. The next day at the open air base, In Chang was in a meeting about the mission. They were discussing the last six ICBMs of North Korea and a man named Lee jun Pyong, who was a specially trained operative under the Ministry of People's Armed Forces and a North Korean informant, managed to turn to their side before the denuclearization. jun Pyong's cover was blown after he discovered the location of the warheads, and now he was being held in a detention facility. The goal of the mission is to contract jun Pyong and secure the warheads. There were two teams on this mission, Alpha-1 and the technical team. in Chang is assigned as the captain of the tech team, and they are tasked with installing the uranium attached to the detonator. Both teams departed on a plane to North Korea when Alpha-1's plane suddenly exploded due to the height and weight that the plane couldn't handle. The tech team saw what happened and jumped off when their own plane malfunctioned. Upon landing, in Chang was near the Alpha-1 crash point, and General Choi ordered him to get the black bag that contained the map of the mines and a GPS tracker that would lead them to the detention center where Lee jun Pyong was. in Chang did as he was ordered, and after retrieving the black bag, he reported to the general that no one in Alpha-1 survived. Since Alpha-1 is gone and there is no backup, Alpha-1's mission, which is to secure jun Pyong and the nuclear weapons, was handed to the tech team. On their way to the detention center, in Chang briefed the whole team about the mission, and when they reached the detention center, they discovered that all security had been killed when the prisoners caused a riot and the prisoners were fleeing, except for jun Pyong, who showed no sign of movement. 
They followed the GPS tracker into the detention center, cautious as Jun Piong was a possible double spy, and found a messy-looking Jun Piang who mocked them for looking so intimidated by a single person. In Chang ordered a nervous Kim to open the door, and the latter obliged. After telling Jun Piong about the plan, In Chang released Jun Piong to let him take a shower. Jun Piong cut his hair and pulled the GPS tracker out of his head. He opened In Chang's wallet and saw the ultrasound of In Chang and Ji Young's baby. He also pulled out the map of the mines, tore it up, and ate it. Inside their vehicle, they passed by the statue of North Korea's great leader that had collapsed on the ground because of the earthquake. Jun Piong commented that he always felt bad looking down on the great leader from his apartment. In Chang realized that his wallet was missing, and Jun Piong handed it to him, playfully telling In Chang that he ate the map. Enraged by what he'd done, Tae Sik punched Jun Piong, who only made fun of him. Stopping in front of a blocked tunnel, Tae Sik accompanied Jun Piong, who wanted to take a dump. Squatting down, Jun Piong lit up a cigarette and threw the lighter in front of him, letting an irritated Tae Sik squat down to take the lighter. With his back turned on Jun Piong, Tae Sik didn't notice that Jun Piong had taken off the cuffs, and he was knocked unconscious. In Chang noticed that Tae Sik and Jun Piong were taking longer, and they all went to where they were only to find Tae Sik on the ground with a bleeding face. Jun Piong also left the tracker on Tae Sik to prevent the tech team from finding him. The tech team searched for Jun Piong, who was back at home with his dying wife. He asked his wife where their daughter was, and his wife weakly answered that she was at her brother's house. His wife also admitted that she was the one who ratted him out, and he shot the spot beside her head. Meanwhile, the tech team reached the collapsed statue, and In Chang remembered what Jun Piong said about it, so they decided to check the apartments. That's when they heard the gunshot, and they rushed to where the sound came from. They pointed their gun at Jun Piong and demanded that he put the gun down. Jun Piong did, and In Chang ordered his subordinate, Nam, to cuff Jun Piong up before leaving. They went to a machinery complex where the six ICBMs are. In Chang was telling the team his plan when Jun Piong cut in, making fun of it. Then he stated that the factory they were seeing was a fake one and the real factory was underneath. He advised the tech team to turn off the generator and use night vision goggles to enter the factory so that they wouldn't be seen easily by the enemies. The tech team listened to his advice and formed two groups. The first team went to turn off the generator, while the second team went to basement too. While the others were fighting off enemies, Tae Sik threw a grenade in front of the generator because he didn't know how to turn it off. The electricity in basement 2 went down, but the electricity in basement 1 didn't. In Chang and Jun Pyong were cornered by North Korean soldiers, and Jun Pyong asked for a gun. In Chang gave Jun Pyong a handgun with rubber bullets, and Jun Pyong shot him with it before introducing himself to the North Korean soldiers. One of the soldiers checked In Chang's body, and that's when In Chang and Jun Pyong attacked them in surprise. The tech team regrouped inside a container where Jun Pyong put in a password, and the container, which is actually a secret elevator, moved down. Jun Piong then opened the gate leading to the factory beneath, and there they found the six ICBMs they were looking for. They cuffed Jun Piong to a metal bar and wore safety gear as they extracted the warheads from the propellant. They separated the uranium casing and performed a radioactive reading. They then separated the cores and mounted them into the detonator. While they were securing the warheads, the second eruption occurred. However, the tech team has only retrieved five cores, as the last one was still locked inside the warhead and they were having a hard time opening it. In Chang didn't want to leave without all six cores, so he broke the warhead to get the core. Jun Piong, on the other hand, broke free when he saw the gates closing. He blocked the gate from closing and left before the team could even realize he was gone. But when he was out, he was on a phone call, and he received an order to retrieve the detonator and bring a technician that could disassemble it. So Jun Piong went back to rescue the tech team that was still in the factory underneath. Meanwhile, a dam has collapsed, causing a tsunami in Seoul. Ji Young was on her way to the meeting point when she encountered the tsunami and managed to survive it. The tech team and Jun Piong left the collapsing factory safely, and In Chang reported to the general about their successful retrieval of the cores. Yu Kyung approached Robert, who was hiding under the desk with his laptop. Robert told her that their estimates of the eruptions were all wrong. 80% of the deposit in the seventh mine is iron ore, so the velocity of the eruption was faster than estimated. The volcano was changing, and that was the weak point. If they hit that weak point in the seventh mine, they would be able to stop the final explosion. The tech was putting the detonator in their vehicle while In Chang was threatening Jun Piong to give him a map so they could finally leave without him, when Jun Piong saw a laser pointing at them and pulled In Chang down just as the enemy started firing. The others took cover and started firing back, but the tech team was going down one by one as the enemies were hitting directly. Jun Yong realized that the enemies must have heat detectors. In Chang handed Jun Piong a gun and ran to a truck. He stabbed the truck's gas tank and let it leak as he drove to where the enemies were. Jun Piong checked everyone 
and Sergeant Min shot the truck's gas tank right after In Chang jumped off. In changed ordered his team to retreat when he saw their vehicle approaching him. He saw one of the enemy soldiers riding on the ground and was confused when he realized that the enemies were Americans. In Chang hopped in a vehicle that Jun Pyong was driving, and when he realized that his team wasn't there, he got tossed by Jun Pyong. The American garrison was alerted by the South Koreans' mission and stopped them from continuing it as it was a violation of the U.S. alliance. The the American soldiers sent to North Korea retrieved the tech team, and when they saw that the uranium piece and the captain were missing, they searched for them. Meanwhile, In Chung managed to free himself from the cuffs while Jun Pyong was busy taking a piss. Before Jun Pyong could get to him, In Hang immediately went to the driver's seat and sped away, causing Jun Pyong to almost fall out of the car. Jun Pyong grabbed In Chung, and the car swerved towards the cliff as the two of them fought. The car flew and was stopped by a tree branch. In Chung crawled away, but Jun Pyong pinned him down. He took the taser gun and tossed Jun Pyong, but the latter managed to push the taser down on In Chung, and the two of them lost consciousness. Buses were already leaving the evacuation meeting point when Ji Young arrived and stopped one of them. The soldier recognized her as In Chang's wife and let her in. That's where she met Robert, who decided to leave because of his disappointment with the South Korean government. They reached the port where they were going to board a ship to leave Korea, but Ji Young was stopped as she didn't have US citizenship. Back in the north, In Chang and Jun Pyong were traveling to Bachin, a town near Baekda Mountain, on foot while carrying the detonator. They stopped over at a store for a while until the Americans came. Sergeant Min and an injured Taesik also came with a bus, and they evaded the Americans. The third eruption occurred and destroyed the bridge, stopping the Americans from following In Chang's team any further. Meanwhile, the evacuees were panicking at the port, and Robert protected Ji Young. Deciding to help stop the final eruption, Robert called Yu Kyung and told her to steal military documents. Yu Kyung did and was about to sneak out when she was stopped by the Americans. But the president sent his men to help Yu Kyung out, and the latter met up with Robert and Ji Young to contact In Chang. In Chang was surprised to know that Ji Young is with Yu Kyung and Robert, while Ji Young was getting emotional when she learned that her husband is in North Korea. Robert and Yu Kyung told In Chang to go to the seventh mine instead, and In Chang ended the call immediately, changing course. Jun Pyong, who decided to leave the uranium piece to In Chang so they could finish their mission, reached Bachin and met her daughter, who seemed to be too traumatized to talk. The Chinese gangsters that Jun Pyong was planning on giving the uranium piece to arrived and shot him when they realized he didn't have the package. But the Americans also arrived and exchanged fire with the Chinese. In Chang arrived a while later, stopping in the crossfire and stopping the gunfire. The Chinese gang and the Americans approached the car and saw that the detonator's timer had been activated. In Chang told them that there was no way to stop the timer, and when the volcano erupted again, the Chinese gangsters and American soldiers fled. In Chang ordered Sergeant Min to take Tae Sik to the hospital and take Jun Pyong's daughter with them. Jun Pyong said goodbye to his daughter once again, glad that he was able to meet her even just once before he and In Chang left to head off to the seventh mine. In Chang contacted Ji Young, and feeling the looming danger, Ji Young cried for him to come back to her. In Chang ended the call, and Ji Young told Yu Kyung and Robert that she was going into labor. They brought Ji Young to the hospital all the while the volcano was erupting. In Chang and Jun Pyong have reached the labor and cut the cables of the elevator to go down the mine's depths. Jun Pyong told In Chang to get another rope to tie the elevator with and when In Chang did, he closed the elevator to prevent In Chang from entering. Jun Pyong told In Chang to take care of his daughter before making the elevator fall. Week after the fall, Jun Pyong struggled to push the detonator closer to LA-24, the weakest point in the mine. In Chang, on the other hand, cried as he sped away from Mount Baekdu. The detonator exploded and successfully stopped the eruption from destroying Korea. And all North and South Koreans celebrated. A year later, the reconstruction of the Seoul Metro has reached 74%. Robert came back from the US, finally growing attached to his homeland, and Yu Kyung welcomed him back. Meanwhile, In Chang has adopted Jun Pyong's daughter, and together with his and Ji Young's own son, they have become a happy family.